Okay, folks, you know what time it is? Oshkosh time. Got our tickets in hand at last. We got uh, Captain Kev here. He's yeah, going to be riding along with us. And uh, Zach, he's got this fine diamond. So looking forward to the flight up. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching the video. You've got one notch in plows. Take off. Roger. All right, heading checks. Don't see any deer on the runway, so that's good. Cars coming in. Instruments look good. Gauges are in the green. Your speed's alive. Not bad. That's a smooth. Wait till we get a safe altitude, we'll bring those flaps up. Uh, the city's looking pretty. At about 300 feet, go ahead and pull power back 25-25. Alright, 25-25. Uh, let's see, about right there. Bringing this baby back. I think this is my first time ever being in a plane with you. I think so, we've flown uh, formation together. Very safe uh, altitude, I'm gonna go ahead and bring some flaps up here. Oh yeah, you can feel that. And then uh, let's toggle it over to, uh, you want me on two? So, so you put your comms in one, right? Yeah, I put yeah it so one. hit COM1 there. There you go. One. Now you're active on that. Alright. Thank you, Gary Tower. Diamond 416 Alpha Mike. Diamond 416 Alpha Mike, Gary Tower. Yeah, Diamond 416 Alpha Mike, just off of Griffith. Like to transition the west side of your airspace northbound. Yeah, 6 Alpha Mike approved. Alright, transition approved for Diamond 416 Alpha Mike. Thank you. Alright, we'll go ahead. If you want to toggle in uh, 2000 for our selected altitude for now. That's okay. I'll plan this so this is the autopilot selected altitude, and this is our selected altitude here. Yeah, that's where I like it, right there. Yep. Yeah. Now I, remember, the big knob doesn't work. See what happens? It just doesn't. All okay, right. So just I just use the small one. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And we're still about 25. I can bring this back just a bit more to get it. Right yeah, there, that's a good setting. Yeah. Okay. Don't that's worry good. about it. And I'll let you mess with the fuel because. Yeah. Oh wait. You know what's uh, good for the mixture and stuff, and we'll be we'll be. A little bit slower for a while until we get north of the city. Hey, we're Oshkosh bound. Woo! What do you think, Cap? You guys want any drinks, beer, cocktails? Uh, tonight. <laughs> Our flight attendant in the back. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> he, he aims the please. Our one passenger still in the bathroom, you guys. So let me know when we're going to take off. <laughs> Well, we missed that note. <laughs> We're airborne. Let them go. This is some nice, calm air so far. Oh, man. Beautiful. Fantastic. Obviously, there's Gary right over there. So, is Zach when you guys were flying formation over the lake, Mark? Uh, yeah. I noticed when you were taking off, you guys having that little discussion. I'm like, okay, now it's, now it's all coming together. Yeah. 
I think that's the first time we met. We actually met over, uh, when we met in person for the first time, yep. we met over Cedar Lake. Oh, some people we met by flying formation. Yeah. Heck yeah. Times. Uh, so, so we're just uh, flying along for the measure of it. I don't have a problem with doing one little loop around the city if you want to. Sure. So. We're just uh, we're just having fun. That's what Oshkosh is all about, right? So absolutely, we're not, we're not on a tight schedule. Uh, how do you like the plane? What do you think? So far, it's pretty Good smooth. So Zach, why'd you buy this airplane anyway? I was looking at every type of plane, looking from Cessnas to Cirruses, and uh, you have a 150 already. I have a 150. Yeah, and I was on working on uh, potentially. A 172 that had a G1000 for training yeah. students, but uh, that that was even more going to cost even more than this. Right. And for what a, a student will pay, uh, I figured we could go with the lower price option. Right, right. And uh, this is just a really unique experience for students. This plane, we're over by Western where I train, so they're in the Cirruses a lot. So I felt like this is a plane that's very similar. That doesn't cost as much as a Cirrus to operate. Right. So this plane just really fit everything that I wanted in a plane. Yeah, it's it's a unique design. I like the like little yoke. It has that nice little feeling. Yeah. So obviously in the center instead of uh, on the side like the Cirrus is. It's a really pretty simple plane too. That's what I like about it. Real right. simple. I mean, you remember us talking on the phone, you know, a couple times a week. Yeah, I know you did know, a lot You got of... me in touch with a guy that works on diamonds, and he had right. a lot of good things to say. Yep. You did a lot of research on it. it so far, I'm really liking it. It's a, it was a smooth... I barely even put any back pressure in it. It just flew off on its own. Yeah, it's real so. easy to fly. Uh, the only thing that I see with students is just, you know, you got the uh, constant speed prop. Right. I and guess, especially if they're a newest student jumping into this airplane, a little bit of complexity right out of the chute. But once they get past that curve, yeah. I imagine, the aerodynamics of the aircraft seem pretty uh, sound. And uh, teach, teaching calls in this plane versus teaching in, a, like, you have a 150 or a, a 172, it's uh, 10 times easier. Yeah. I mean, so that's Hammond Harbor right over there, not to interrupt you, so I'll just give you a little dip of the wing. So awesome. that's where a lot of people keep their boats in the northwest Indiana area. And then I'll show you further up as we get north towards the city where my buddy keeps his boat. So you're actually going to go on the uh, west side of the city? Yeah, I'll do a loop around. So I'm going to say goodbye to Gary now. And Gary, Diamond 416 Alpha Mike, depart the area to the north. Have a good one. See ya. Speed 84, reduce speed to 170 to Mondo, connect Midway Tower there on 1352. 170 all the way to Mondo, uh, tower there, 352, Southwest 2884. Southwest 4120, descend to maintain 4000. Southwest 4120, descend to maintain 4000. Also, it'll allow me to connect up to three devices to my sentry, so if anybody wants to connect up their, uh, their, um, or flight to it, feel welcome to do that. You'll get weather and traffic that way. Leveling 6,000 feet, 250 knots. 3775 Chicago, go direct to sales for the RNAV Yankee Direct with the sales, Southwest 3775, we'll prepare for that. Well, basically, when I first met Zach, for the viewers that are watching, you were still just uh, working towards your CFI. Now at this point, he's a CFI, he's got two airplanes in his flight school fleet, and he's got two more that are basically on leaseback, so basically you have a flight a uh, one on leaseback right now. But, oh, one on yeah. leaseback and one potentially in works uh, for it. So potentially you're going to have the two different aircraft on leaseback and two uh, fully owned. So four in the flight school fleet. So if you're over in the Kalamazoo area looking for flight instruction, this is your guy right here. We have a lot of fun over there in Kalamazoo. A little uh, bit of uh, modern travel. Roger. 
South 364 cross. I know South that uh, through the RNF, Yankee we have a lot of students well, that they drive all the way down from the city fly with our, our flight school so even if you're a little bit further away from Kalamazoo sometimes even a half an hour hour drive yeah, is worth it if you're way, at a flight school that's got a good uh, culture and you get to enjoy it enjoy your training well, uh, you're get working on all your certificates and ratings maintain 4,000 feet south of 3775 If you look directly off the west here, that's Midway. Airport there. I think I got it, yeah. Center, 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 so currently there's none that are active. There will be a game going on at Wrigley later on, but it's currently not active. So you just always have to watch out because we have the Sox, we have the Hawks in play, and then we have the Wrigley Field. So between the United Center, Wrigley Field, and the uh, Sox Stadium, there's a lot of TFRs that can pop up. So you definitely have to be aware of it when you're doing sightseeing in Chicago. Cross sales at 3,000, clear to RNAV Yankee, 22 left, south of 4370. Uh, when you're doing the, along the skyline, how close do you go generally? Coach Gordon, south of 4370. You can get up pretty decently close to it. Depending on if they've got the news helicopters going. If they have the news helicopters going, then you gotta, you know, you want to give them a little bit of a birth of distance. Cross sales, RNAV Yankee, 22 left, 6,000, south of 4177. Southwest 4120, reduce speed to 200, then to So basically, if I put this right off the nose here, there's Soldier Field directly ahead of us. That's where the Bears play. Also where the Chicago Fire plays, so that's where I was on Saturday watching the game there. And then um, this used to be what they called Mixed Field, if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know yeah. about Mixed Field. So Mixed Field here. Yeah, it's a, a lot Chicago of, tragedy. Right, exactly. So if anybody's played Flight Simulator, for how many years, basically, your, your default, you started out at Mixed Field for a lot of years. Well, anyway, thanks to the lovely Mayor Daly, that no longer exists as an airport, but they've turned it into this kind of ratty looking park. Obviously, we're biased because we're pilots, so. What's the body of water in the middle of it? Is it just a... They just dug it out and let some water in to make it, I guess, for supposedly more picturesque, but not a fan. Anyway, they're landing uh, to your left right now, so they're coming right in over top of us, and that's where they're headed. Delta 4120 cross tails at 3,000, cleared RNF Yankee 22 left. Well, we got the Sears Tower, or what they call the Willis Tower. That's the tallest building in Chicago. The next tallest is Trump Tower. The next tallest used to be J.M. Hancock Building, but now it's the Vista Center, which they also renamed already. And then uh, the Jan Hancock is now number four largest uh, building in Chicago. And we'll see this morning if they have Buckington Fountain going. I don't think they do. Um, and then if you see the, the equipment set up, basically the big stage and everything, that's uh, being set up for Lollapalooza, which is going to be coming. Southwest 4177 to maintain 4,000. It will be starting up there. Southwest 3775, reduce speed to 200, then it's And of course you have the aquarium and the field museums. Southwest 4370, reduce speed to 100. All the beauty that is Chicago. Tower there on 1352. And then this is where my buddy has his boat, right down here in the harbor here. Oh man. When that's we were spot. sailing, that's where we were sailing out of right there. Right there. Now, how are you supposed to get to your sailboat out there? Do you take a... Um, they have a little uh, ferry, basically, that taxes you out, a little boat that taxes you out. I'm just going to slow us down a little bit as we go down through here. I'll do a little bit of some wean wagon so you can get some nice shots, some still shots from the GoPro. Then, if you look right down over here, I'm going to bank to the right, and then I'll be a steeper bank to the left so you can see it. There's Navy Pier right below us. Here. So that's Navy Pier right down there. And they shoot some fireworks off from there most every Friday. They stopped it during COVID, but it's back now, so we're really excited about that. So I'm going to go down just a touch lower, and then we'll do a loop around the city and head northbound. Have you done this city uh, loop before like this? Not the west side, just along the coast. Okay. 
So we'll give you something new before we head up to Oshkosh and give you that experience. Midway Tower there on 1352. And. Total 4 to 20, 170 to Mondo, Midway Tower there, 1352. A really neat thing about the north side, you'll look down and a lot of these um, high rises have pools in them. It's kind of nice. Uh, pools on the road. There's, there's a high rise right here, my buddy lives in. And there's really? a pool on the top. We were that's where we were just the other day. Nice. We'll see the pool on the west side of the town. Obviously there's the Drake right down there. Yeah. That's a pretty famous hotel. A lot of dignitaries will stay there when they come through. Hey, twenty thirty five, southwest thirty six point two, see ya. City never gets old though. I love it. Oh man, it is so awesome. This is looking down State Street right here, right? Pretty sure. Uh, Michigan Avenue runs is the main one that runs right through there, but we just passed over that. And then um, I'll, I've got us basically at the altitude that I, I'm sure this early in the morning there won't be people, but if you look through the observation decks that are pointed out to the west side on the Sears Tower, then you basically look right into the face of the people that are looking out at the at the observation deck. So it's kind of cool when there's people in there. I've even waved at them and they've waved back. So really, yeah, that is. <laughs> oh, and then right over here on the right, there's the United Center. So. Okay. Alright, so there's the observation deck so you can Mondo, see over the tower there how well you can actually view them. Yeah, it's probably too early. Yeah, there's nobody in them that I can see anyway. I'm just going to dip the wing to the left here so you get a nice shot off of the with the GoPro, but then I'm going to bring it back here. Not going to go above 2,000 here because obviously we want to keep the 1,000 foot, you know, because we're overpopulated area. But on the same time, even though the Bravo doesn't start at 2,000, obviously I keep it because they're using 2 2 left. And if we get any higher, it's going to mess up their approach. Coming yeah. in. So it's just kind of a courtesy. We're actually working on adjusting this airspace to give. Um, Midway a little bit wider berth than what they have. But okay. For now the locals just know to stay a little bit lower through there. And there's the stadium where the uh, Sox play, right over here. Yeah. The Sox. So. So yeah, there you go. There's our beautiful city. So well, now I know that you can go around the other side. I will uh, keep that in my. Yep, back pocket. That was that's pretty awesome. Then a lot of times what we do, like when I take people up to like Pilot Pete's, is I actually do the, what's called the Eisenhower transition, where I go directly between Midway on the south and uh, O'Hare on the north. There's a transition okay. you can take right through there. You have to be pretty low. So pilot Pete's is over here. Yeah, it's okay. over on the west side of um, uh, O'Hare. So I'm gonna give this wink a little wags here. So Kevin, you probably done this a few times, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, he's done it with the helicopter, man. Yeah, that's that's an experience that you got to do sometime. You need to come back and all three of us maybe take up the R44 and uh, and see Chicago by uh, by helicopter. Yep. So that was our excitement. After we take off from Griffith, we've got all the beautiful views. After this, we just coast it out until we get to, to Milwaukee and then basically then towards Oshkosh. All right, sales at 3,000 and uh, understand uh, maintain 210 not degrader for that was 2978. How you liking the flight instructing so far? Is it something you can see yourself doing long term or try to get out of it ASAP? Or? At first it was just going to be my time builder. Uh, and then when COVID and everything happened, uh, I figured, well, I'm probably going to be instructing for a while and over hurry to get, you know, into the events, but after I bought this and uh, I've gotten more into it, it I really love it. Yeah. yeah. November 416, up in my contact, Chicago, first 120.55. 12055, Diamond, 416, Alpha Mike, good day. Good morning, Chicago, Diamond, 416, Alpha Mike, 2000. 
Four six Alpha Mike Skagger, four three Alpha Cylinder three zero zero seven, maintain via far outside Bravo airspace. Three zero zero seven outside the Bravo, Diamond four one six Alpha Mike. And three zero zero seven. Perfect. Thank you. I I just really love instructing, working with students, uh, being able to own a cool plane. Isn't uh, it a rewarding experience, isn't it? And oh, I think yeah. airplane ownership on top of that is a whole nother, a really neat thing. It's it's definitely not something just to jump into without your research, which that's why I'm glad that you you made a lot of phone calls to me and you made a lot of phone calls to other people, but there's nothing quite as rewarding as having your own aircraft that's yours, that you know exactly how it's maintained and taken care of, it's your baby, and, yeah. and getting the flight instructor. I mean, I've made such good friends that I still stay in touch with people, certain people, students that are literally all around the world that I've flight instructed in. It, it's just neat to see them go out and succeed and do their thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot better than just flying around some boxes. Not judging guys that decide to go the cargo route. You know, everybody's got to do what's best for them. But um, I, I'm glad I chose the flight instructor route. So any prospective students that are listening, maybe. Don't discount uh, being an instructor because I know some people talk smack about it, but I've really enjoyed it. Well, I didn't think it was. I, I, originally, I didn't even want to instruct. I yeah. wanted to do something different, but um, really, it was way different than I thought. It's it's harder than I thought. It's tiring. <laughs> Have you ever been like at the end of the day where you're like, I just don't want to talk to anybody? Your voice is like your throat is so sore from just talking and no, it's, explaining uh, and going over stuff. I saw a meme that said, Have you ever had a day that kicked your butt so bad you just drove home with no music the whole way? Like, <laughs> you're staring out the window. Yeah. You get home, you didn't even realize you just drove home. You're like, man, I'm just so hype. Yeah. Kevin, did you get your... CFI later in your career, or did you get it right off the bat, right out of uh, college? I did it right through college. It was part of the curriculum. Uh, okay. Started out uh, the private right after graduation high school. Then I attended uh, college at Southern Illinois University. Uh -huh. uh, picked up the commercial and instrument, uh, then the multi, the CFI, and then the MEI. And I taught at SIU, and then there was another uh, FBO there, uh, Part 60, also taught at. Uh, during that time, uh, night nighttime, I also uh, worked for Illinois Department of Conservation, flying a 206. Oh, nice. Uh, we flew lat logs looking for poachers in Southern Illinois. Right. And then uh, one of the biggest uh, charter companies uh, with the Aero Commander, the 500 series, Cape Central Airways, uh, we take the bosses. 52 up to Effingham, Illinois, and fly the Air Commander out to Acker Canton, Ohio, and yeah. wait for the other gentleman to come in from Teterboro, and we would switch packages, and then to Effingham. Right. So, yeah, that's the avenue I took. Uh, the flight instructor was short, uh, but rewarding, and then uh, I got back into it thanks to uh, you and Paul Goldsmith over at uh, yeah. Griffith, Indiana. And then you've had the opportunity to flight instruct your son, uh, bo well, both of your sons, and then you've had the opportunity, I see, to uh, help out a few of your buddies that their their sons work with you at American Airlines, and uh, and now they're well on their way. At, I think both of them are down at Indiana State now, right? Yep, they're yeah. they're at Indiana State um, working on their commercial instrument. Nice. And then they have a younger brother that, ironically, uh, later on this morning is heading over to Fort Wayne, Indiana, to do his private pilot check ride. Oh, sweet! Awesome. So yeah. So that being said, you get to have a lot of friendships, and even like for me, obviously it's not my main career anymore. But I, I uh, do find it rewarding to even work as a CFI on my days off, um, just to help out friends and. Uh, uh, just hang around the airport and have fun. So even if you decide to move on to the airlines or move on to something else, uh, decide to go fly corporate like what I'm doing, it's uh, being a CFI, you can do it on the side for most companies. Some companies won't let you do it on the side, but you have to check with those. But for my company, they allow me to. So it's, uh, it's rewarding, and also you can make some extra dough on the side if you want to. So as long as you keep it up and don't let it go. All right, folks, we're gonna be shutting off the cameras. We're north of Chicago. 
We are headed to Oshkosh. I'm going to be punching in some of the arrival information, go over the NOTAM, but we'll be back with you, give you guys a good brief on it. And uh, yeah, we're headed to Oshkosh. It should be fun, guys. Thanks for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Oh,